Facebook family. Welcome to another edition of African Health Dialogues. I'm so happy to have you with us. My name is Regina Askel Williams. I'm a New York based family nurse practitioner. I am also Vice President of African Views. And one of the projects we have on African Views is to shed more light on the health situations in African communities and African communities in the diaspora. As a matter of fact, everybody who would listen in would be able to take you know, one lesson or two away from the discussions we have on uh, the many health problems we have in our populations. Um, I am very happy to have you with us today. And I'm also very excited to have a very special guest with us. His name is Dr. Nelson Aluya. Dr. Nelson Aluya is a prolific, very intelligent young doctor with a huge resume. And his uh, reputation preceded him because I heard from most of you some of you who worked with him on various projects and some of you who worked with him in the hospitals wrote in to say how good a doctor he is. And today, he's going to talk to us about high blood pressure, okay? Before we jump into high blood pressure, let us get to meet Dr. Aluya and explore the alphabet soup behind his name. All right, okay. Dr. Aluya, welcome to our discussion today. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Your name says Dr. Nelson Aluya, MB, BS, MD. What does that mean? Well, um, originally, I'm glad to be here, as a matter of fact, uh, and I thank you for creating this platform um, to bring onto uh, the population that you and I both serve mm -hmm. uh, the importance of health issues as it you know, pertains to us, especially the fact that we as you know, blacks and Africans and now African Americans, mm -hmm. we stand on a peculiar uh, pivotal point where uh, the decisions that we make with regards to food and diet and environment affects our health even far much more. Yes. Uh, so I'm glad for this uh, opportunity as a matter of fact. Uh, for the name, yes, yes, my name is Nelson, mm -hmm. Nelson Oke Aluya. Mm -hmm. uh, the Oke is the middle name and it's Nigerian. Mm -hmm. I'm originally in Nigeria, born in Nigeria. I grew up in Nigeria, went to elementary, secondary, and um, medical school to the great Amadeville University in Zaria, yes. where I got my MBBS from. And that what stands, is MBBS? And that stands for, you know, Masters in Medicine and Masters in, in Surgery. That's what it oh, literally wow. means. And then I moved over to the United States, mm -hmm. you know, went through the whole rigors of the exams, I and know. Oh. You know, the process of becoming a doctor here, and then the MD, is attached to it so okay. I wouldn't forget my roots yes I forget what I got from Nigeria it took me a lot of work to get that <laughs> so <laughs> it's still added uh, that's my first my first love thank you so very much and we pray that the alphabet soup behind your name continues to grow <laughs> as you click on more milestones All right, thank, thank you. you for being here with us now you said you were originally from Nigeria what part of Nigeria um, my mom is Benin my dad is Delta but okay. I was actually born in Benin, so okay. I, I'm a do Delta. But you, you know, back Delta. home, you, you claim where your dad is from. So okay. I'm Delta and from Isoko, the Isoko tribe. Wow. I, did, I don't see any gray hairs on your head, <laughs> unless, of course, uh, your beautiful black hair, which you're part of, <laughs> is from a, a, a bottle in the bathroom, which means you might have dyed it. How did you do all this in such a short time at your young age? Well, uh, I often joke and I tell people I'm not as young as I look. Uh, <laughs> but what I do is basically, first, I understood who I am and what mm -hmm. I am and what my body is mm -hmm. and what how to flow my body because I build, above all I'm with myself 24 hours of the day except when I'm asleep but then um, it's uh, a disciplined process of diet and exercise that's okay. basically what it is no black bottle or green bottle in the, <laughs> in the, bathroom. <laughs> in the bathroom no hair dye no okay. no hair dye I'm so just grateful for that okay. some of my friends would We'll, we'll begin the back to those questions. I know yes. who they are. <laughs> <laughs> Please send in your questions. Send in your questions. We're on live with Dr. Nelson and Luya. And today we're going to be talking about high blood pressure. You see how good he looks? He controls his blood pressure. He works out, diet and exercise and what have you. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, Dr. Nelson, let's just jump into it. Every, we keep talking about high blood pressure, keep teaching people about high blood pressure, but the numbers show that kidney diseases, strokes, and what have you are on the rise in the African communities, and these are um, uh, target organ damage as a result of high blood pressure. It, so it behoves on us, um, the healthcare practitioners, to keep educating the masses about this uh, 
terrible disease which is called a silent killer. Let me call it a condition, it's not quite there yet as a disease. Um, a condition that can be controlled and can be managed and can even be um, negated if you take good care of yourself. So please tell us what exactly high blood pressure means. And Stephanie, listen up, you said you don't know what high blood pressure is. Okay, all right. Well, um, high blood pressure is actually uh, the persistent increase, it's a clinical condition uh, where you have a persistent increase in the systemic pressure, mm -hmm. you know, of the individual. Systemic pressure being the, the pressure your heart has to overcome. Yes, to well, you, you, you have pressure, pressure can go up in the systems yeah. all around you. You can have pressure in the system, which is what we know BP or high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. You can have pressure within the eye, mm -hmm. which is actually glaucoma. Mm -hmm. You can actually have pressure within the lungs, yeah, which would pulmonary hypertension. Yeah. So those are all pressures, and there are factors that uh, you know uh, lead to those those causes. Yes. Now the systemic blood pressure, which we all know. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a clinical condition that uh, come about an increase in the systemic blood pressure uh, that has been going on for most likely a long time. Yeah. Now, the, the biggest issue is it, it's as complex as it is, and we're still learning about it, yeah. but at the same time, it's as simple as it, it may come. Yeah. Uh, I know people call it the silent killer, but I call it the not so silent killer anymore. Not so silent. How is it not so silent? You feel <laughs> good. Well, you, you don't feel any headache, no pain. Sometimes headaches, but you don't feel any pain. And what doesn't hurt you, you don't pay attention to. Well, most right. people, right. right? So you don't even know that something is going wrong. Right. You know. Right. So. So um, and that's why when you ask me about my gray hair and what I do, I always say this: first, be in tune with yourself. Okay. Know who you are. Know how your body functions. The number of times you go to the bathroom, the number of times, you know, your heart rate is. Know what your blood pressure is. Know what your heart, your average Most heart of rate us is. Don't know. know what your blood sugar looks sounds looks like or, mm -hmm. or, or, or shows. Mm -hmm. Know what your feet looks like, mm -hmm. so that when there's a cut somewhere or anything going on, mm -hmm. you can tell there's something wrong because the body speaks to us. It really does. It's one of the biggest problems. We just do not listen. Yeah. Now, high blood pressure is the most common primary diagnosis in any part of the world. Okay. Most common primary diagnosis. And it begins with, you know, you having pressure that may would begin uh, that are started and some call it pre hypertension. Yes. Uh, and that's where you have blood pressure that's been going on for a while while you may not know, you may not feel it, you may not even tell. Yeah. But then it becomes um, um, persistent high blood pressure, yeah. where you begin to have signs and symptoms of high blood pressure, um, Which, of headaches, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of dizziness, fatigue, mm -hmm. uh, plus or minus increased heart rate and all that. And then it becomes pressure where it becomes um, hypertensive urgency, mm -hmm. meaning the blood pressure is so high, that's the one that usually the doctor will see, mm -hmm. and then they send you to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Or it becomes a hypertensive emergency mm -hmm. where you have end organ damage, meaning the areas where in the body where you have blood pressure supply, uh, yeah. blood, blood supply, supplies. will begin to damage those organs from the brain, the eye, the heart, the kidneys, and even the legs. Yeah. You know, um, so that's how it is. Now, in defining what blood pressure is, um, these days there've been a lot of uh, variations and numbers, yeah. you know, associated confusing. with this, which can be confusing. Yeah. But I always tell these people this now: mm -hmm. everybody's just different. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like, you know, you have females, you have male, you have, you know, Caucasians, you have, you know, uh, African-Americans or black people, you mm -hmm. have Indians, Chinese, you have people who are tall, short, fat, thin. So the essence is this, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll go right back to 360 where understand who you are and yeah. what your body tells you. And that comes from your genetics, yes. what you're made of, your family history, what your DNA is telling you with regards to race. Okay, so let, let's not deviate from that for too long. <laughs> you see, it's been said that high blood pressure um, is a, a typical disease of the African American. I know it spreads worldwide, uh, you know, it's distributed quite rampantly worldwide, but the African American and the Africans really typically suffer high blood pressure. Right. Even when you do filtration rates in the hospital to see kidney functions, 
is a different number for the African American. So we are genetically dis predisposed right. to having high blood pressure. Could you talk a little bit about that and, and why? Would you, um, now if you listen to your body, you feel good and everything, but your numbers don't correlate. Right. You know, right. your, your numbers are high, but you feel good. What do you say to people who say, then leave it alone. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Right. Well, before I do that, I'll mm -hmm. tell you this. What are the numbers? You know, because one of the okay. biggest issues that people will have and concern is, Doc, I have high blood pressure, but what does that mean? Yes. You know, if I write the number for you, I give it to you, you may not understand or know how to, to define it. Yes. Now, the ideal blood pressure, you, people will say, less, you know, systolic, which is the upper number, yeah. one less, 120 or less, yes. and the diastolic is 80 or less. Yes. Now, if you have, let's say, between 130 uh, to um, 139, mm -hmm. You, people do call that pre-hypertension, and that's on the systolic. Yeah. Now, on the diastolic, you have blood pressure of 80 to um, 89, yeah. and that's pre-hypertension. Now, yeah. you're defined as having high blood pressure when your pressure is between, is 140 systolic, this is the top number, mm -hmm. systolic 140 and above, or a diastolic of 90 and above. Okay. Now, those are issues, and then that's further broken down into, you know, stage one and stage two, yes. uh, where you have the, you know, stage one or the type one, uh, a blood pressure of, um, let's say, 150 to, uh, 149 to uh, 160 is type one, and that's for the systolic, and then for the lower number, it's uh, 99 to about 100, 110. Now, um, for type two, that's you're talking about 160 and above. Mm -hmm. And then for the systolic and for the diastolic, you're talking about 110 and above. Mm -hmm. Now, that's where be you begin to have hypertensive urgency and end organ damage. Yeah. Now, we as a people, I mean, when I mean we as a people, black people, mm -hmm. we're particularly predisposed to high blood pressure yes. for a number of reasons. Genetics yes. plays a huge role. Uh, the environment that we live in plays a huge role. There are protective factors that, that are out there and there are predisposing factors that begin to really affect us. Please, can you elaborate on those things? First of all, how does genetic make us uh, predisposed to high blood pressure? Does it mean that our body holds on more salt? Or does it mean that we are hurting ourselves eating more salt? Well, I mean, there's a whole variety of reasons for that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can define it into inherent and, and uh, non-inherent factors. The inherent factors are genetics, meaning yeah what you've inherited you can't help it. from your yeah. parents. Yeah. Now, um, there are a whole lot of things that we begin to know now mm -hmm. where the DNA that you inherit from your parents um, have hormonal changes that ah. predispose you to high blood pressure. And that's what the DNA codes for. Now, there's a missing, there's a, you know, addition of those genes, there's a variations of those, I use the word alleles on mm -hmm. the DNA, mm -hmm that produce predispose an individual to have a high blood okay. pressure and high blood pressure that is really mild or highly elevated or even those that are uncontrolled. Okay. Those are the inherent factors. Okay. Now, the, the non-inherent factors uh, could be broken down control. right? Mm -hmm. the social factors yeah. for which you talk about smoking, you know, alcohol and all that and all that. Um, then you have obesity, yes. which again can be genetic and non-genetic. Yes. And then you have uh, the intake of food, yes. salt, which is a big issue. Um, but people always ask, salt has always been with us so forever. Why is it so why us now? now? <laughs> why, why is it becoming an, an issue? issue. And, yes. and that's where there's a whole lot of uh, research going into and yeah. there's a whole lot of uh, um, changes um, and, and research work going into that. And I'll, and I'll explain. Yeah. Um, and then you have other factors like diseases. I mean, there are diseases even babies, you know, are being born with you know, pressures that are high. And that's because probably the kidneys, the kidney play a huge Euro, role. Yeah. Two big organs, kidney and the heart. Yes. Um, and then the adrenals play a huge role mm -hmm. in Coffee. determining, you know, what your, your blood pressure look like. Yes. Uh, there are what they call neurohormonal um, um, components that are produced where the brain tells the, the kidney, hey, you need this excrete this yes, or retain this. The renin, the, right, yeah. the renin, angiotensin, yes. you know, and aldosterone yeah. uh, component. Um, and those are the issues that are neurohormonal issues that, that come along as well. Yes. Now, there are other factors, blood supply to the kidney. 
Now, if the blood supply to the kidney are narrowed, yes. so the kidney is not getting enough supply as it should, so it tells the brain, hey, we're not getting supply. What do we do? Yes. It tells you, oh, you know what? Retain more salt. Okay. So you excrete salt less in the urine, mm -hmm. and then retain salt, and that in itself increases your blood pressure. And that's why okay. when you see a, a, a doctor who uh, you're meeting him for the first time begins to tell you, hey, your blood pressure is high, what would they say? You do all the blood work, screen you for a lot of stuff, uh, including some neurohormonal stuff, mm -hmm. your um, cortisol level, your uh, angiotensin levels, um, your VMA, you know, um, those are all technical terms. Yes. But then as well, send you to get an ultrasound of the kidneys yes. to see what the kidney size look like. Yes. Are they big? Are they narrow? Yes. Um, the blood flow going through the kidney, yes. are they obstructed or not obstructed? Those are issues that, that need to be, to be addressed and, and thought of when you see your doctor. And every, you know, reasonable, rational doctor who you see will tell you that. Okay. And then um, those are the things that will begin to really look, look, look for when a doc, when you go see your doctor and you know and like I said be 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 very open yeah. and before you know maybe we'll talk about that what to do when you're going to see your doctor because those things are really important yeah especially we as African-Americans or black people where for those who are in Nigeria they see the doctor as some demigod it's hard to ask questions and then for those who are here they don't want to sound you know stupid they don't want to sound all you know some implicit bias racially yes. implicit bias or explicit bias that you know predispose people to um not being comfortable with the doctor and not ask questions but that's a different issue okay so i'm sorry i have to keep jumping in because right. there are some salient points that i want you to throw more light on let's go back to our diet because you really are what you eat right. your food makes a big impact on your blood pressure you also said, um, you, we talked about salt retention and salt content of our food. We talked about narrowing vessels. Um, vessels narrow because of fat deposits or fat deposits in the vessels. Okay, now all these things are influenced by what you eat. Okay, African foods come from the soil. We take our food from the garden, we cook it, you know, salt it a little bit, and then we don't have issues. What happened now? Is it that our forefathers had these issues and we didn't know about it? Or... Is it the influx of uh, Western diet mm -hmm. in, our, in our foods? What's going on? Because uh, I'm a nurse and I know the, you know, the wisdom in <laughs> controlling your food, but nothing can separate me from Afang Afu food, nothing. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell me <laughs> how to safely eat my Afang Afu food right. and be healthy right. at the same right. time. I, I mean, um, no doubt. And like I said, when I initially began, we have a huge slew of individuals in categories right now. Yeah. Now, and there's a reason why I'm coming from this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you live in Nigeria or live in Africa, there's a type of food that you eat that will predispose you or may be protective of you with you know, high blood pressure. Okay. Now, for those, that's another category, those who are Africans who live in Africa. Yeah. Now, Africans who moved on yeah. here, we're, we're talking, let's say, uh, I'm categorizing two, two, two types now. Yeah. Those who moved there early enough, meaning, you know, during the slave trade and all that and yeah, all that, yeah. they moved on here earlier enough. Yeah. And those of us who are recently moving. Yes. Now, there are two variations of set of people. Yeah. For 500 years, a lot of things have changed. The environment has changed things from, uh, you know, from, from, from how they eat and everything else. Mm -hmm. But again, there's still basic categorical things that haven't changed. Yes. That still make them look like you, mm -hmm. who had just moved on here. And then, um, looking at both ends, if you take a spectrum of all blacks across, mm -hmm. those who live in Africa, those who lived here for 500 years on the, the, the generation, those who are living here, mm -hmm. high blood pressure is common, is on the increase, yeah. and the debilitating and devastating effect yeah. of high blood pressure on African American is so much more um, for, for us. Yeah. The National Association of... Um, Hypertension uh, education program mm -hmm. in 1991 actually said there were 43 million people with high blood pressure in this country. Yeah. That's 1991. Yeah. Fast forward down to 2019, yeah. there are over 84 million people right now mm -hmm. with hypertension. And globally, with a, uh, 7 plus billion people on earth right now, mm -hmm. it is estimated that about 1 billion people have 
hypertension. Yeah. So we're talking about roughly about 20% of uh, the world population has been described as having high blood pressure. So it's prevalent amongst everybody. It's yeah. on the increase. Now the question is why? Yeah. Now, why diet plays it? Now, the next question is why is it worse on us when we have high blood pressure? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Simple. High blood pressure, like every other disease, is almost new to our DNA, basically. Oh. And that's why where we talked about evidence-based medicine yeah. in the past, we'll begin to shift on now to talk about precision medicine. Okay. And what does that mean? Precision medicine means you tailoring your management or understanding your disease, mm -hmm. your management of your disease, based on your individual. Not just based across what everybody says, mm -hmm. but based on the individual because again, everybody's different. Yes. Now, why is it increasing in us? There's a huge increase in all the, the, the incidence. Like I said, every 10 years, the incidence goes about 10% actually. Yeah. So globally, it's, it's on the rise. But why us particularly? Mm -hmm. Basically, diet. 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 Oh. Now, the diet that we eat yeah. back home yeah. is changing. Yes. Uh, in the sense that people are beginning to adopt Western kind of food. Do you mean like what type, like burgers? Or yes. I, I, fast food, I, I, fries. <laughs> you don't want to mention those names. No, right? no. I mean, we, I would mention those names. And I yeah. tell you this I've given talks when I always say it is okay to be civilized, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily have to be westernized. Oh, okay. Yes, and they're two different things. Mm -hmm. Now, adopting a civilized method yes. of doing things. You know, you're on the internet now, you're mm -hmm. using a laptop. It's mm -hmm. civilization. But westernization does not necessarily mean you have to adopt the western culture and the western style of living. Okay. The Chinese have done it. They retain their, what they have mm -hmm. in culture and dressing and diet. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is doing. But unfortunately, we as a people, when mm -hmm. I mean we as a people, Africans and black, we become so enculturalized mm -hmm. that we leave the values that are true and peculiar to us. And those are the things that are protective of us. And one of the things that I'll really say, the big one, and I often joke and I say, listen, there's a reason why God put the sun there and put us in Africa around the equator. Yeah. Because the sun is very protective. It produces vitamin D yes. and all the whole, and those play, you know, critical huge role, role critical yeah. role on humoral. Um, um, negotiations, yes. I'll use the word now, yes. with how our body works and yeah. protect you from a lot of things, from mm -hmm. high blood pressure, diabetes, mm -hmm. and even autoimmune diseases. Yeah. So when we have our people now not wanting to go out in the sun, they say, oh, I don't want to get darker. Gee, you're already <laughs> black. It's not going to make any change. You understand? You stay in the room, uh, you run away from the sun. There's a reason oh why goodness. you're dark, you have melanin, yeah. and the amount of sun that you get at a certain level would help determine the amount of vitamin D your, produ your mm -hmm. body uh, produces and those are protected. Which will help your body. Yes, protect. that's one. Yeah. Two, the diet again, like I said. Yeah. Um, they did a study one time where six months, they took, they did an EGD, meaning they took a biopsy of the yes. stomach yeah. of 10 people from Africa yeah. and 10 people from, from blacks, I mean now, yeah. of uh, African-Americans in the UK, in the mm -hmm. US. And then checked out what the D, the, the the stomach fibers mm -hmm. look like and the, the stomach wall look like. Mm -hmm. Now, the stomach wall of the African was yeah. really huge and nice, structured and all that. Yes. And the, that of the African Americans was a little blunted. Now, they switched the, the diet yeah. six months in between, yeah. took a biopsy again. In six months, they found that the healthy diet, the stomach wall of the African who live in Africa had changed, had become blunted as compared oh to the African-American. So the African-American now began to have uh, the, healthy the healthiest. The, right. Oh my so goodness. So one of the issues that is really paramount mm -hmm. is uh, avoiding foods that are high in, uh, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Uh, um, Fats? Not just no, fat, but... No. Purified sugar. Oh, purified. Oh, wow. Yes, those are big issues. Fructose and all that and all that. Those are things that are new to our DNA. Uh -huh. we, our body never saw that before. We never processed those things before. Okay. As we lived in Africa, 
those who migrated here to the lifestyle in Africa anyway, mm -hmm. but people who really moved on, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Caucasians and everybody else, yes. over years their DNA adapted to those things. Wow. But we begin to see these foods right now and yes. that's why it's affecting us so much more and the mm -hmm. increase in high blood pressure is so much more in our set of people. Yeah. So, and we can't handle it, just like I just gave about the change in, you know, the stomach, the stomach wall. Wow. So, yes. those things really matter, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. um, so, because of that, the fruit, the fruit and vegetable based diet that we used to. Yes. You know, you talked about your amphi. Amphi yes. is what? Basically, vegetables, vegetables and, 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 and a little starch. Mm -hmm. So, those things are what your DNA can with, recognize, recognize so which your parents have passed them. down from your great 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 grandfather passed on to you yes. and they're protective of you because yes. it identifies you yes. now when you move somewhere to eating I butter fried fried uh, uh, p potatoes oh my God. Uh, uh, um, what do you call it uh, butter and all that Bacon. stuff and um, burger those things are new to you um, you understand new to your DNA so your body takes you know it takes its time to begin to process those yeah. stuff and that's why it begins to affect you mm -hmm. now we really found out that, in fact, there was a study of young, you know, bright African-American gentleman who yeah. uh, is from Texas, I forgot his name, now, did a huge study, where in a community in Dallas, they gave, they took blood pressure for everybody, mm -hmm. thousands of people, over, you know, 50,000 people, and saw what the blood pressure is, and introduced um, fruits-based diet, yes. vegetables and all that, into the yeah. community yeah. with a negoci negotiating partnership with the pastors and a food bank yeah. uh, and a um, farmer's food product. Yeah. So a huge drop in the blood pressure of the individuals who live there. Wow. And not just that, they lost weight. And then since the chronic kidney disease that mm -hmm. happened, this is another story, because for the African-Americans who have high blood pressure or blacks, mm -hmm. they progress on faster three to four times faster to kidney failure and ending of dialysis oh, than dear. everybody else. Oh, so they found out that those food-based diet and vegetable diet is actually protective of those who eat more vegetables, okay, who so eat more fruits. Let's make a, 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 a let's stress on that. Right. Let's make an announcement to our people watching that fruit-based and vegetable-based diet will protect your the stomach lining, protect you against the, um, getting a high blood pressure, right? right? And a uh, drop, help you lose weight. Right. And uh, on top of that, moderate exercise, I'm sure you would add. Oh, yes, that. definitely. Okay, we're going to come back to that, but let's um, um, take some questions from, from our viewers. Oh, my goodness, this is so interesting. And I felt I knew everything there was to know about high blood pressure. Now I'm hearing about stomach linings and diets. Wow, so diet is really key. Huge. It is huge, key. especially for the black man. All right. Now there's a few people who asked about uh, the medications they should take for the their high blood pressure. They talked about propranolol, talked about Exforge. Um, we'll come to that in a little bit. The best person to prescribe your blood pressure medication will be your doctor because it's going to assess you depending on your um, your race and everything because it affects different races differently. And the medications work for different races differently. You'll throw more light on that. Okay, we also had somebody who said she is five feet, five foot three, and she is 153 uh, pounds. I think that your body mass index, your yeah. height and weight controls or, or impacts right. on your high blood pressure numbers. Right. Somebody is asking if it's okay to take alcohol with your medication. Oh, you shouldn't do that, right? No, no, no you, you should, should not do that. As a matter of fact, there's been a lot of um, deaths, people passing on from you know, mixing alcohol and medications. Another person talked about um, which machine is um, better to use to check blood pressure, uh, the di digital or the pump. We prefer the pump because you... The manual. The manual, because you read directly from the artery. Correct. Okay. And not just that, um, those digital ones from time to time <laughs> needs to be calibrated. Okay. You know, and, and checked. Uh, you don't know what the battery level is and all that and all that, but that's a different story. Okay, so there we go. So as we discuss, you're gonna throw more light on those things. So um, we took a minute to talk about how important diet is for your blood pressure. Okay, so that's how I'll let you continue. <coughs> Add exercise. Right. So wait, excuse me. Okay. Go ahead, please. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we can't. I'm sorry, I had to we, involve the we can't, viewers. Uh, we can't overstress it. <laughs> yes. Uh, diet, exercise. I mean. 
my I put exercise mm -hmm. at the top and yes. then diet. Okay. I mean, um, I try to exercise every day, mm -hmm. and I always tell people this: it is not um, how mm -hmm. much, yeah, but for how long. Mm -hmm. It's not the intensity, but for the duration. Because I mean, I do five minutes exercise every day. Because it's, it's the accumulative effect okay. of what you get from the exercise rather than, you know, two hours, you know, five hours, once a day, you know, for the next one month or mm -hmm. two months and then you let it be. Mm -hmm. You know, find something that's easy for you, mm -hmm. that's achievable, that is attainable, that things you can do on a daily basis that would not really alter your, your, your pattern or your routine. Mm -hmm. For me, I do it before I take a shower every day. What do you do? Um, sit-ups, jogging, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, I'm so busy, I hardly find time to go to the gym, but mm -hmm. if I do have time to go to the gym, then that's another plus. Okay. So, for, for patients who come to see me, sometimes I even show them what I do mm -hmm. um, at home. What about they, dancing? You will show some dancing. Maybe well, you should <laughs> <laughs> Dancing is good, but, you know, the essence is this, and I, and I tell people this every day. Mm -hmm. Try to let your heart race once at least every day. And race? Race, like... Is go, it a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. Because you know what they say, yes, the exercising the muscles of the heart. Mm -hmm. Because a rolling stone God has no moss, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So the blood vessel, when your heart beats fast, yeah. you see, when you wake up in the morning, your body repairs itself. Yeah. As it repairs itself, all the things, the byproducts of what it had repaired uh -huh. the night before, of course, has to be eliminated. Okay. And that's why one of the first things you do is when you, when you wake up is mm -hmm. what? Go to the bathroom to go pee. Mm -hmm. Because some of the chemicals are not the byproduct. The common way of excreting is mm -hmm. the urine. So once you do that, exercising speeds up the pace at which all those chemicals and all those byproducts are excreted in the body. Mm -hmm. And of course, again, you know, feeling, you know, getting hydrated is important. Yeah. So um, having a routine for yourself every day where you have the make the heart race at least once a day is important. And besides, it's getting you ready for, for the day. I joke and I say this, Usain Bolt is going to run for nine point something seconds or whatever, but you see he runs and exercises over, you know, time and practice and practice. Mm -hmm. You're going to walk eight hours, 12 hours the whole day mm -hmm. and you didn't get yourself ready for it. I mean, it's a no brainer. You just get yourself ready, you know, stretching, Mm -hmm. Exercising, running on the on a spot or something, mm -hmm. doing sit ups or you know riding a bicycle in the air. If you don't have a a, a, a gym equipment, mm -hmm. I know some of the gym equipment are kept for for clothing. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different story. So the, the, the treadmill. Uh, when people say I want to buy that, don't don't buy a treadmill. There's no need. Uh, you you know, won't use it. No, there's no. Most women don't use them. So <laughs> yeah. But you know they have clothes on it. And for all of you who have treadmills here, we yeah. know what you've done with it. So, but. You know, looking for some simple tools in the house yes. um, that you can exercise with. You can put your hand on the, on the door, mm -hmm. you know, you know, press, you know, stretch mm -hmm. and, you know, hold it and, and run or push the wall and run on it just to increase your heart heartbeats. Yeah. So do that on a routine basis, on a daily basis, you okay. know, and that's, you know, you have the accumulative effect. Mm -hmm. I often joke, uh, say this. I say, if you put a bucket here right now, put one drop every day mm -hmm. in three months, what's going to do? It's it awesome. will fill up. Yeah. So it's not the amount that you put in, it's the persistent, the accumulative yeah. effect of that one drop every day mm -hmm. that will make you feel. And for it to spill over, it will take one drop for it to spill out of right yeah. again. So you see, one drop can make a difference. Okay. So we've talked about diet, we've talked about exercise. Now you mentioned a few, the, the, some of the exercises we can do to keep uh, blood pressure away. But um, what I notice with most Africans, there is no motivation to exercise. It's like they count the working at, uh, with, uh, suffering, you know, not suffering. Right. When you have a minute, just sit down and rest, right. you know. Um, I, I am guilty of that because after you run around on the unit, when you come home, you're in recovery, right. you know. So um, wh where do we find the motivation to, to exercise? We would like to talk about appreciating your life. It's right. only one life, right? right? We'd like to talk about quality of life. Right. You don't want to live a hundred years on medication, being sick, you know. Right. So, um, what are some of the things, where do we draw motivation? Can you right. throw more light that, I mean, to uh, get uh, Africans uh, off the couch? <laughs> right. To uh, uh, most times when, for, for 90 to 
five percent of patients uh, that I see at top visits, mm -hmm. they don't want to be on medication. They don't want to take pills. They don't want to take pills. They don't want to mm -hmm. take pills. And they're like, "Doc, I hate pills." I'm like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. I hate pills." <laughs> but you know what? You have to take steps into caring for yourself. Yes. I mean, for those in the U.S. who knows what 401k is, meaning saving money for the future. Yes. I always tell people this: you have to save yourself as well. By exercising, by dieting, mm -hmm. and being disciplined with some of the things that you think would promote your health. Mm -hmm. And that's your 401k. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how much money you save, you know, for yourself, down the road, you, you don't want to enjoy that money in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or you end up in the nursing home all cranked up because of a stroke or yeah. one thing or the other. Yeah. So that's simple discipline mm -hmm. of first understanding how your body works mm -hmm. and understanding what the values yeah. that you want for yourself. And I'm sure everybody values themselves and yes. loves themselves. So yeah. um, the motivation for exercising, I found mine. Mm -hmm. I do mine before I exercise, uh, before I take a shower. Yeah. So just and before I took a shower, as mm -hmm. soon as I close that door, yeah. I exercise, the bathroom is right there, I sweat yeah. a little bit, yeah. I run into the shower. Okay. So it's easy for me. I'm very busy as well. But would, at the end of the day, would I come back home after everything I've done and say, well, let me exercise? No, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people this, for you to look as nice and cute and well-dressed and whatever, you, you took you. a shower. <laughs> <laughs> you took a shower today, right? Yes. So, yeah. so before you do, do that, yes. just exercise. Do a little something. You can do it for mm -hmm. one minute, two minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, on the week where you have to run, because for women who would have to wake up early enough, prepare food, take, get the, the children ready. Mm -hmm. Look, set the alarm five minutes extra. Mm -hmm. Or two minutes extra. So that two minutes you spend in the bathroom. Because yes. obviously, I hope you do take a shower every day. <laughs> so, so before you do that, just exercise. You know, take yeah. one, two minutes. And then on the weekend, if you have extra time where you have to wake up, you know, you don't have to rush, then increase it. You can do 10 minutes now, 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, or doing that. So early morning before you get your set red, that your day ready, mm -hmm. do that. I give an example of Usain Bolt. He gets ready for nine point something seconds, but he trains yeah. for what? You're going to work for eight hours, mm -hmm. ten hours, mm -hmm. and you don't get yourself ready, and then at the end you begin to wonder because at that point in time, it's like putting yourself on overdrive. You wake up, you take a shower, you brush your teeth, you rush, 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 you go. The body hasn't had enough time to readjust to the yeah. day. So exercising on a daily basis Sets is working, up. right, it's setting up, getting all the hormones ready, mm -hmm. all the good hormones and all that, mm -hmm. and decreasing the inflammatory process because ah. everything is about inflammation. Yeah. Your blood pressure, your diabetes, all begin with inflammation. Yeah. So when you do that, you decrease the inflammatory process that's taking place in your body and helping the body say, you know what, I'm here, I got you. Yes. You go on for the rest of the day, you're good. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh man, you're making so you know contributing a, a huge lot of uh, a whole lot of points right. to how we can take care of ourselves to prevent you know developing hypertension. Let's talk now about um, target organ damage and medications that are best for the African American because I think there's a special class of uh, hypertensive medications that are best for the African American for Black people and also the side effect. One of the major side effects of some medications would be um, erectile dysfunction, mm. which is why most African men will not touch blood pressure medication. Okay. They'll rather have a stroke or they'll rather, you know, whatever, <laughs> than, you know, have whatever happened to them. Right. So let's talk about N, N, um, N organ, organ damage. damage and then the medications that are best for black people. Right. I mean, N organ damage, um, blood pressure affects mm -hmm. most organs that you have in the body. I mean, from the head, you get strokes yes. um, or bleeds. Mm -hmm. uh, in the eye, you have retinopathy, yes. meaning glaucoma can set in, mm -hmm. inflammatory changes in the eye, people lose their eyesight. Mm -hmm. um, if you talk about the heart, um, they have, uh, you know, blood pressure affects the blood flow to the vessels that supply the heart the itself. Heart, yes. They get stiffened, they get, you know, less compliant, meaning yeah. they can't flex and extend, yeah. you know, as, as uh, that goes on. Um, where they have heart attacks, heart failure, mm -hmm. you know, even arrhythmias, because the heart in itself, because what happens is the heart tries to protect itself yes. as, you know, the pressure with skins, the system goes, goes really, you know, high up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, hypertension is actually described as uh, uh, 
cardiac output, the product of cardiac output and you know total peripheral resistance. So yes. meaning the flow, the resistance of heart, the heart pushing blood into the blood vessels. Yeah. So if the vessels in the legs or hands or everywhere get tightened and stiffen, so and the heart has work. to work extra to mm -hmm. push you know uh, the blood tight. through. So in the process, it has to develop its muscles yeah. to be able to do that. So it does that after a while. But if you persist and continue and you don't control the blood pressure, guess what? The heart says, you know what? I'm I done. Give <laughs> oh, no. I give up. Oh, no. I'm out of here. And when it does that, it fails. Yeah. Now, before it actually fails, mm -hmm. certain parts of the heart may increase in itself. Mm -hmm. And because the heart has electrical impulses, okay. so those areas where the wires, I use the word now, mm -hmm. wires, so mm -hmm. the network of fibers that mm -hmm. conduct those electrical uh, uh, yeah. uh, yes the Purkinje fibers mm -hmm. and AV nodes and all that can actually expand mm -hmm. and when they expand the heart is confused yes the fibers is supposed to travel maybe five millimeter now yeah. it's traveling ten millimeter yeah. it gets confused yeah. so the heart don't don't the, the electrical impulse does not go where it yeah. should be and then you have arrhythmias yes. you know atrial floater atrial fibrillation and that in itself can lead to heart uh, heart, heart attacks and heart failure. Yeah. Now, when you come down to the kidney, it affects the kidney mm -hmm. because it needs to um, do the job of filtering everything else that, that has to go through. Yes. The kidney is a, an amazing you know, oh. organ, but then it's a lazy organ as well <laughs> because it doesn't want to be bothered yeah. at all. But if you give it so much, it tries to accommodate as much as it is. Yes. Now, the, the nephrons, which are the individual unit of the the Inflation. kidney that function, you know, um, in the job that it does to mm -hmm. filter out the things that you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, most time people say we have up to two million each, but as age goes on, they begin to decrease, they mm -hmm. begin to stiffen. So if you add high blood pressure on top of it, yeah. it makes it even worse. Yeah. So the kidney begins to to show prob there, there's a problem. Yeah. And one of the problem, the first sign that you may, you know, the first thing that you begin to see. That's why I always ask patients when you do that. Ask your doctor, please. Check my urine, urine and see if there's yeah. protein in the urine. Yes. Now, now before the protein actually begins to show, you mm -hmm. have what they call albumin, microalbumin, meaning yes. the one you can't see on the camera, but they can test for it. Yeah. Thank God we have a few years ago, we didn't know about this, we yes. didn't have, but now we do. So once you begin to see microalbumin in the, in the, in the, in the, in the urine, in the urine mm -hmm. and you have mm -hmm. high blood pressure, mm -hmm. it means that the kidney is suffering. Oh. It's beginning to suffer from um the high blood pressure yeah. so it's important that you need to control your pressure because otherwise that's how it becomes a cascade of things yes. and you end up on uh on, yeah. on dialysis yeah. so and that's how um it's important that you begin to take take notice of you know some of all this because yes. high blood pressure is the second most common cause of of uh, uh, kidney failure in the world. Yes. Uh, number one, <laughs> number one is diabetes. And then I always joke and I say, listen, if you have diabetes and you have high blood pressure, they tend to go together. Yeah. And worse, again, in African Americans, or uh, black people where you have high blood pressure and diabetes, mm -hmm. both of them going together. That's a double whammy. That's yes. double insult on the kidney. So yes. people go on on dialysis mm -hmm. if you if, if if that's not taken care of. Now you talk about the legs. Yeah. The blood vessels that supply the legs, they all end up what they call their end arteries. So. Yes. For those who smoke and all that, it stiffens the blood vessels, yes. high blood pressure begins to, because it wants to protect itself, so mm -hmm. they begin to shrink and close. Mm -hmm. And before you know that, you see skin changes in the legs, yeah. and the legs begin to change color, yeah. and the blood flow is there, does not go through. Before you know it, there's no blood supply. You go see the doctor, the food doctor, they say, oh, we need to cut off the leg. So oh, yeah. these are issues that begin to, to happen, and it affects, you know, you know, it affects everywhere. Yes. It affects the lungs as well. Yes. Oh dear. Yes. So, um, coming to medications. Medications and the side <laughs> effects of the medications. Right. Everybody's well, listening I, I know. to know I that I mean, one. my my male brothers in the house will always say, you know, doc, this is affecting you know a young man. man. He can't he can't do his duties. So what do we do? So yes, uh, we take a look at that. We are mm -hmm. very cognizant of that as well. Yes. And then begin to um, to make changes. Look, have. Um, an open and honest discussion with your doctor when you mm -hmm. go see your doctor. Um, mm -hmm. Get ready. Get the medications that you're taking with you. Mm -hmm. um, write everything down. Because they are, you may have visited the ER yesterday or mm -hmm. two weeks ago, or you saw another doctor or somebody, or you think you're even taking some over-the-counter stuff, uh, medication that's affecting your blood pressure, affecting mm -hmm. the medication that you're even taking. Yeah. Or, you know, grandma said, oh, this is the one. We used it 500 years ago. Anyway. It took a high blood pressure. It's fine. <laughs> Or you even have, oh, the nutrition, 
you know, I'm going natural. Yes. Listen, even some of all those natural things that we think we were taking, for God's sake, we don't really know what capsules is in, inside of it. Before you take some of those natural things, I always tell people, listen, I, no, not just that. Find out where those things are from. Wow. Research the company. Yeah. If it's made in China, you know, India or whatever. A lot of these places, they don't have, you know, uh, um, um, oversight, a government oversight yes. controlling the medications that people take. You hear yeah. of, of, oh, recall of this drug, recall of that drug. When was the last time you heard recall on any of those nutritional products? When was the last time? You don't hear Nobody's of that. You understand? Nobody's yeah. researching. How are those things affecting us? Mm -hmm. They really do affect us. Yes. You understand? Yeah. So, but coming to the medications and deciding which medication to take. Yeah. And that's where, again, precision medicine comes into play. Yes. Listen, we're black, we're different. There's no, you know, compulsion. Uh, I'll be bold and audacious about saying that we're black, we're different. Mm -hmm. And if you tell her, if you're gonna give me a medication to treat what I have, then you gotta tell her to who I am and what I am. Yes. And, and looking at my background, where I come from. And yes. that's why it's important. When doctors ask you those questions, it seems like, oh my God, he wants to know all my life. Mm -hmm. You know, where were you born? <laughs> <laughs> when were you born? Uh, who gave that to you, your father or your mother? Uh -huh. What, what town, what village, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> When you migrated to America, to Australia, when yes. did you migrate? Yes. All of those things play a huge role yes. in determining eventually how your body reacts. Because look, in all sincerity, there are some clinical conditions you acquire when you move into a different you know, geographical or, or climate zone. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as far as much as the food actually does interfere with the medications as well. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what, what's the story from your parents? Because one of the biggest issues, and I always say this, with the African-American or the black population, we do not tell our children our history. Oh, we should, yeah. Most people do not know. If you ask, so dad, what did he die from? I don't know. But father died. He died young. He died at age 54. Yes. You don't know what killed him. Yes. Because whose genes are you carrying? You're carrying his genes. Mm -hmm. You understand? So what likely happened to dad may happen to you. Yeah. So it's important that for parents who are out there, please, if you have issues, share with your children. Discuss yes. it with them. Mm -hmm. You understand? And you as well. If you have, look, tell your brother, mm -hmm. tell your sister. Yes. The issue is, oh, now that they do me, that forget <laughs> that. You understand? <laughs> Push crap. Look, a lot of people these days have so many issues bothering them. They don't yes. even have time for you. Yes. And in all sincerity, you find out that people even live in 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 the Western world, like in the U.S. Yeah. They they begin to say, oh, it's HD home trouble. <laughs> You understand? I'm like, listen, <laughs> look, <laughs> I know these things exist. Mm -hmm. However, first sit down and take an account of your life exactly. and what you've done and what you think are doing. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and begin to review those things. Even issue of cancer. Cancer runs in families. Yeah. They're genetic predispositions predispositions to cancer. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> these are issues that are really important. So when you come and you see your doctor, get ready. Yeah. Get all your facts, yeah. write your medications you have, mm -hmm. write the questions you want to ask him. Yes. You understand? Most of, I know everybody's in a hurry or whatever, yes. but if you approach your doctor that way, mm -hmm. he begins to say, oh, this guy or this lady mm -hmm. is taking charge of his or her, he's her serious health. About it. So yes. it's serious. Because we want to see patients who are taking charge. Yes. You're with me maximum 30 minutes in a day, mm -hmm. three months or four months in a mm -hmm. year. But guess what? You're with yourself Two four seven. Yeah. So who knows you better than and you? And you, nobody. Not the doctor, but uh -huh. you. So coming to the medications again. Yes. A doctor will sit with you and advise you based on the preceding um, issues that you have. Yes. Meaning, is it a pre-occurring um, disease that you mm -hmm. have? Is it high blood pressure? Is it diabetes? Is mm -hmm. it you know uh, cholesterol? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, autoimmune disease that you have? So they would tailor those medications to who you are yes. and what's best for you. Yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. And not just that. If I'm going to give you a blood pressure pill and I find out that your heart rate is 60, I'm going to give you a, heart, a blood pressure that will lower your heart rate because yes. some of them will also lower your heart rate. Mm -hmm. You know, like the beta blockers, mm -hmm. they will lower your heart rate. So if I do that, it's counterintuitive, it's counterproductive yes. because I'm not going to make things worse for you. And that's why when you come to the doctor free office, I know people are you know panicking, and some people would ask questions about white coat syndrome. Yes. Uh, yes, does exist. Yes. But then, listen, a good doctor will say, you know what? Relax. We understand. Yeah. Well, nobody wants to come see the doctor for God's sake. Mm -hmm. But relax. Especially the men. Yeah. Well, that's that's <laughs> You know, relax, and then check your blood pressure. Yeah. 
And if the blood pressure is high, we'll recheck again mm -hmm. when I'm seeing you. Mm -hmm. And some of them will say, oh, dog, I have Vico syndrome. And if you can, go home, check your blood pressure again from home and see what it looks like. So you write it down. Those are some of the things you write. Uh, if you don't have a means of checking blood pressure, go to the pharmacy. Yeah. You know, or go to a local hospital or go to, you know, for those in the U.S., you know, the CVS, Walgreens, they have all these machines. You put your hand, you read your blood, blood pressure yes. for you. You know, and you know, if you're particularly pregnant, that's another story entirely. Yeah. So those are things we need to. And so tailoring your blood pressure pill is based on who you are. Yes. Now, if you are female and mm -hmm. you have high blood pressure, mm -hmm. now you're taking a certain kind of blood pressure pill, yeah. like ACE inhibitors or whatever. Yeah. Now you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. You can't take those medications anymore because it will affect the baby. Yeah. So again, those medications have to be changed based on your pregnancy to give you ones that are safe for your pregnancy. Yes. So choosing the right high blood pressure pill so actually depends yes. mm -hmm. on the individual yeah. and having it open, serious, conversation. conscious conversation with the doctor. Yes. Determining, doc, what is best for me? Mm -hmm. You understand? If I have a young wife that you know, I need to take care of, you, don't, want by, that like, listen, of you don't want to give me a better blocker <laughs> that, will, that will, you know, inhibit performance. And then uh, my uh, Amalia will run away. So we don't, <laughs> we don't want that. So um, that's why it's important. And again, yes. if you have diabetes, yes. now there are medications that ACE inhibitors that protect your kidneys. Mm -hmm. So if you have diabetes and you're spilling protein in the urine, then you put in on ACE inhibitors because those will protect your kidney. So you would rather take that than to take, um, you know, a calcium channel blocker mm -hmm. that are not known to be protective. You yes. understand what I'm saying? Yes. So um, tailoring that um, really does help. So. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, sitting down with your doctor, discussing with it, mm -hmm. coming with, with, with questions and all that, and then asking open open questions, mm -hmm. really, and being very candid and discussing with your doctor what it is that uh, you need to take and how would this affect you as an individual, what yeah. you're taking. You wow, thank you so very much. Thank you. This has been a very exciting and very informative conversation, and um, I look forward to having more of these conversations with you because I see from your practice that you are broad-based, in your qualification, right? Internal medicine, right? Yeah. Okay. Pediatrics. Pediatrics. Oh, that's you do babies too. Yes, you I take do care babies. of. Oh wow! You take care of young people, mm -hmm. um, and you're an attending physician, an assistant professor, right. and a medical director at a, at a sub acute rehab center. Right. Wow! No wonder so many people were talking about you. Good yeah. things. Good things. <laughs> and I see that you were also working. Oh, you were very busy during the Ebola period. Yes. Testing people for. Okay. Testing those people that came back from so the Ebola, Ebola endemic area, okay. you know, screening them as they moved into, you know, uh, the U.S. Wow. Uh, so some form of uh, a tertiary screening. Yes. You know, to protect those uh, who were coming and to protect those who actually lived there. You know, did some training with the CDC and mm -hmm. you know did that 2015 when the Ebola crisis was, uh, was mm -hmm. on, on the rise. Yes. Send your questions in because we're round, rounding down. Send your questions in. And uh, I see that you have led, led a lot of medical missions to Africa, and um, you teach about health. Um, uh, you teach at health conferences and seminars, right. right? And then you've been to Haiti, to Jamaica, and you're an ambassador of peace. Right. Wow. Right. Okay. Right. That's, well, that's... I'm, a, I'm a medical advocate, so I uh -huh. advocate for for uh, good health and yes. promoting, you know, uh, good health. Yes. Uh, and I also say this: uh, life is sweet. Uh, when you're happy, yes. but life is complete when you're healthy. Wow, wow. Okay, people are asking questions. I don't, I don't want it to, to um, interrupt us. Okay, thank you so very much, Doc. In closing, in closing, what are the five major points? Any, you want to say something to me? Okay. In closing, what are the five major points that you want Africans to take away from us today? I know um, we're going to test somebody's blood pressure. Right. I don't want to check mine because uh, I did take my medications this morning. I don't know how it's working. <laughs> we're going to check blood pressure. We're going to show the correct way to check blood pressure. And um, we have talked about the different machines to check your blood pressure. We talked about the different calibrations. So we have to be careful of that. Whatever you use, stay with it. So at least you can tell right. the variations you know, from the particular machine right. you are using. Okay, in closing, what are the five main things we talked about? We touched on a, a quite a number of things for people to do to make sure that they keep their blood pressure under check. Under check. 
But what are the five main things you want Africans to go away from this program with today? Right. Well, we're rounding up. Send your questions. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you once again You're for welcome. this platform. Thank uh, you for coming. It's, it's wow. amazing, and I'm glad uh, to have the opportunity to to share what I. I, or some of the things I know and, mm -hmm. and you know been working on and, and stuff like that so mm -hmm. um, yes one first know who you are mm -hmm. know what your body works know how your body works know who you are mm -hmm. understand who you are because it's important because that's when you'll be able to tell your story about your health mm -hmm. to the healthcare provider mm -hmm. because nobody else will do it other than you yes. or better than you mm -hmm. uh, secondly um, Please share your story. Yes. Let your if you let your family know and find out what your family history is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, research. People look like I tell, like I just said. People struggle and work hard and, and search for money and all that. Mm -hmm. Without health, everything stops. Yes. If you don't have health today, if I'm not healthy, I, I, I wasn't feeling well today. I can't sit here today. Yes. I'll tell you, you know. Sweet Virginia, uh, I'm sorry, I can't come in, I, I don't feel good. Uh -huh. But so, it's important. Um, so, find out what your family history is. Mm -hmm. Share your family history. Mm -hmm. Share your, your history with family members. Mm -hmm. Because not just that you'll be saving yourself, you'll be saving somebody else as well. Yes. Even, for, even you know, members of your family. Um, diet. Your diet. Mm -hmm. The food that you eat. Mm -hmm. Listen, know what your DNA tells you. And what it means, the natural food that you're used to, mm -hmm. eat them. But eat particularly plant-based diets. What about GMO? How does it affect us? We should still... Uh, they say organic food. What we have in Africa is organic. Yes. But when we come here, whatever organic we think we're buying here is GMO. Right. And then that might be impacting us negatively. Right. Are we now going to find visa for uh, crayfish and fufu and whatever from across the... No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, for those who are back home, they still have the... I still hope. Yes. Uh, they still have the natural, you know, farm base, farm produced, mm -hmm. you know, diet or whatever the uh, food that they eat, mm -hmm. uh, the organic food that they eat. A lot of these are changing now. Mm -hmm. A lot of chemicals that have been added to some food oh, even yeah. back home. And those that are imported back, back home. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I joked and I, I talked about, listen, it starts from when you're little, your children. Yes. Kids are having high blood pressure now because mm -hmm. you see them, the obesity is becoming an, an, an epidemic. As obesity goes, so also diabetes goes, and long comes high blood pressure. Wow. So it's important, your diet. Please eat plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. I mean, for once in a while you can eat meat, but not, you know, it shouldn't be a big, a major part of your food. Yeah. I know our culture back home where the senior, uh, the old person has, has used to eat the, meat, 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 the egg <laughs> and cholesterol. But then, listen, another risk factor, other than everything else, smoking and all that, is age. As we grow older, High blood pressure increases. Uh -huh. Now, in this country, the incident prevalence is about uh, 18 to 22 percent for those age 20 and above. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take a sub age above 60 mm -hmm. years of age, almost 80 to 90 percent of them have high blood pressure, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So it's important, you know. So diet is really important. Yeah. As 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 you age, understand that your diet may need to change along with it. Mm -hmm. So eat more organic food more, you know, uh, uh, fruit-based food. And you eat one time a day? Uh, well, that's because I understand how my body works. Okay. <laughs> so I eat once a day. If I, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't eat breakfast. Because I, like again, and this is what I tell people. I understand that by the time I eat breakfast, I get cranky, I get short fused, I, you know. So my, I, over time, I got, I got to understand that. Yeah. So what I do, I drink some water, I drink, you know, natural-based fruit, yeah. and then it keeps me going. And then I exercise in the morning, of yeah. course, as I do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, other than that, um, Exercise. exercising mm -hmm. find a routine mm -hmm. that suits you mine again in the morning I try to do sometimes two minutes mm -hmm. sometimes five minutes as much as I can exercise and then to jump. stay in the correct weight range yes. what if I do liposuction yeah. well <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, you see the issue is this and, and, and for exercising uh -huh. for those who a lot of people have told talk I exercise, I exercise, I mm -hmm. don't see no results. Yes. But this is how it is. If you keep mm -hmm. a routine on a daily basis, mm -hmm. let's say three months, to give you a typical example, three months routine daily, uh, you know, five minutes every day for routine. Mm -hmm. You find that, and I found that, for the first one to two months, you may actually gain weight. The reason is because, much. right, the fat is refusing to go because they've taken space there mm -hmm. already and they don't want to move. Mm -hmm. 
they're slow to accumulate and they're slow to leave. Okay. So, but in the process, you accumulate muscle. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, you find out that muscle increases. So people get discouraged within the first one to two months. Mm -hmm. Oh, doc, I'm exercising, but it seems I'm gaining weight. You understand? Mm -hmm. So in as much as you exercise, the diet comes in. For those who drink soda, Coca-Cola, listen, cut it out. Ooh. Cut it out. Okay. And I'm serious. But if you have to do that, maybe once a, a week, a or what, you know, yeah. once a blue moon, mm -hmm. and people talk about diet, all right, fine. But listen, for, for me, if I have to drink a soda, I don't have, I just dilute it. Okay. It's an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh my God, doc, you're drinking soda that is dilute. I like, but because that's how it tastes good to me. Mm -hmm. The other one is so toxic to me now. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, I can't do that. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's important. So, mm -hmm. within the first three months, one to two months, you may, you may gain weight because of, you know, the increased muscle mass. But as the third month, you begin to lose weight. Okay. And you see, and that's encouraging. Yeah. So, I tell people, look, get a little um, scale. The scale. Yeah. People don't want to sue that. Mm -hmm. But look, if you want, it's just like looking into your bank account. You need yeah. to see what's there. Yeah. So how would you know if you don't, you have the money if you don't look into the account? Yeah. So also, if you, how would you know if you don't check? Yeah. So take that bold step to check, have one, it's okay. And you see the weight, you know, increase gain for yeah. a while, but after a while, once the fat begins to melt, they will continue to melt. Okay. You understand? Yeah. I know people have talked about medications for to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm not an advocate for that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the ones that have been out there for the longest time it have caused more damage mm -hmm. than anything else. Yeah. Um, where some of them actually increase your, your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. However, we've had new medications that came out now. Mm -hmm. One was made for me, and all these medications that actually the GLP ones and the SGL2s, two, those are medications for diabetes. The actually is show as an well, I said side effect, yes, uh, adverse effect make you lose weight. Mm -hmm. So if you have high blood pressure and diabetes, yes, those things are good for you. Okay. You understand? So that's, you know, the other one, uh, mm -hmm. diet, exercise. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Coca-Cola Zero, somebody's asking, is that okay? Well, Diet listen. Coke, but the chemical that is in the Diet Coke might be questionable, right? right? How do you know how your body reacts to the chemicals mm -hmm. and your inflammatory changes from the, the chemicals in the body? Wow. We hear about Immunizations. Mm -hmm. Oh, the chemical in the body causes issue, and mm -hmm. uh, you know whatever. How much more the huge chemicals that is those soda mm -hmm. that we don't even know about? Yeah. You know, so it's important that you know we even if you, you do anything, mm -hmm. do anything, everything in moderation. Okay. You know, don't overdo it. You okay. know, uh, don't abuse the things that give you pleasure. Uh, and like I always say, once <laughs> one of the rules of longevity. Mm -hmm. So um, now, when you go to see your doctor, mm -hmm. be prepared. Yes. Get all your facts ready. Yeah. Know your history. Know you know the medications you're taking. Mm -hmm. Even the diet that you, you you're taking. Some of those things really are important as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to you know um, know those things so that when you sit with your doctor, you can have those honest, candid you know discussion. Mm -hmm. And listen, a doctor who sees that somebody's taking ownership of his health, mm -hmm. doctors love those kind of people. Yeah. So when they say come back, they love to see you and yes. talk to you because you know what? It's positive reinforcement yes. to the doctor as well. Wow. You understand? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's important. Now the pills that you you have in, mm -hmm. yes, tailor them based on who you are mm -hmm. as an individual. You know, based on the disease that you have and everything else. And you take understand? your pills. And then take your pills. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, somebody the other day came in blood pressure off the roof. Why she was giving two blood pressure pills? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I was seeing her for the first time, but she was taking one. So only one that she was taking, I said, I saw the other one, is the sister, I said, why are you not taking that? Oh, because it ran out. It ran out and there was no refill. So I just figured I didn't have to. Oh dear. But then guess what? When she oh came in, her blood pressure was off the roof. Oh. A point where, you know, she could stroke mm -hmm. any time. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you've been giving two blood pressure pills, know what the blood pressure pills are. Mm -hmm. And I always say, when I tell my patient, I said, so what blood pressure pill are you taking? Um, um, I don't know, it's there, they bring the blood and I know. It's something you put in your mouth on a daily basis. Yes, you're swallowing so you have something. To know it. So you have to know. Yeah. So tell me the name. Oh, doc is in the system. I say, I know, I can see it. But you <laughs> have to know what pill you're taking and what dose. Because God forbid something happens to you on the street yeah. and they come pick you up. If they ask you, you don't even know. Yeah. You understand? So Because sometimes when an emergency occurs and they have to treat you on an emergency mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. you don't want the blood pressure pill that you're taking affecting the medications or the treatment you're gonna get mm -hmm. you understand yes. so it's important that you know the name of the medication mm -hmm. and the dose of the medications you're taking it's imperative mm -hmm. you're taking those pills on a daily basis mm -hmm. hopefully not for the rest of your life but even if it is but guess what 
That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I always tell people this. If you don't want to take a pill, then exercise. Yes. And watch your diet. Yes. You know? So, I, I mean, in, in conclusion to all of that, mm -hmm. um, yes, no. The adverse effects that mm -hmm. your blood pressure pills so can, can report and so that you can report it, mm -hmm. and then you know, at the end of it all, you know, in all, you know, in all, you know, submission, mm -hmm. I'll be really frank. With the medications that we as a people take, when I mean we as a people, drugs, uh, uh, uh blacks, mm -hmm. those medications and the research that we've done, ask those questions, and I've asked, mm -hmm. how many of us are in the research? That we're done mm -hmm. because they come out with this blanket statement these medications is good for everybody you take it mm. but guess what how many black people were in, there? Were in that study <laughs> yes 20,000 40,000 people in a study globally yeah. but if you look at some of those research yeah it's only 0.5 percent two percent of blacks there so, so does that medication black, yeah. really tailor to you yeah. as an individual of your race mm -hmm. the question is we don't know mm -hmm. so but how do we know or how can we help with that mm -hmm. research yeah. so individuals back home and i take the uh, the, the, the 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 unction mm -hmm. and and address those who are doctors back home right now mm -hmm. please wherever you are sit record something because the things we see here the results that we see and the things that everybody's are, uh, 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 are enjoying mm -hmm. come out of individual observations as a matter of fact yeah. where individuals say you know what for all the people that i did this happens this happens yeah. and the record there Nigeria and Africa is vast. There's so much need for research, especially for your people. Yeah. We're not doing any of those. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So doctors and researchers out there, please be intuitive. Take the audacity and the effrontery to take reports about your people. Yeah. If you see patients, if you see 1,000 patients, collate. take collate results. Yeah. Because as I always say, no data, no problem. Meaning, if you don't collect data, you will never find the problems that are locking in yes. the people you take, in your community, mm -hmm. in your society, in your race. Mm -hmm. If you don't take data. Yeah. Because if you don't have data, then you never have the funding for it. Yes. Because no data, no problem, no problem, no funding. Yeah. So that's one of the issues, again, mm -hmm. that is affecting us as a people. Yeah. So when we talk about all these factors, the smoking, the diet, the gene, and everything, and exercising, Listen, how much of us are in the research work that are coming out for us? Because we have issues where there's the, 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 the problem of, of uh, implicit bias, mm -hmm. uh, explicit bias on both sides, mm -hmm. where the issue of trust again. Yes. We do not trust the system. Yes. I totally agree. But guess what? There's so many ways to kill a rat. We have to find out a ways to do that. Now, and that's why the auction is upon us as medical professionals, those who provide help, yes. everybody, mm -hmm. even nurses. Yes. We have researched the things that came out out of the work that nurses have done, mm -hmm. you understand, that we enjoy today. Mm -hmm. So everybody's hands should be on board. Yes. We should get to do this. And if you can't do that, there's no finances, there's no way, look, collaborate. Yes. Seek out people who are doing researches in big places. And work with them. And work with them. Mm -hmm. Bring your numbers to them yes. so that they can include you with research, yes. you understand? Because that's how we can begin to, to, to get better. Yes. And then when you do that, we begin to inform one ourselves. Yes. Because look, if you take a sample of the, the medical literacy in the black community, it's, it's abysmal. Yeah. It's really no. Yeah. So if you don't have knowledge about it, obviously the, the, the adverse or the, the debilitating effect mm -hmm. will be worse in your people. Yes. You know? So mm -hmm. yes, in summation, Let's get involved in research. Let's get involved. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to have you here with us pleasure. today. Okay, so let's get down to taking my blood pressure mm -hmm. since you have this big coat on. I know, right? And then I have we don't to take have it to... <laughs> Yes. Okay, and then we want to demonstrate the correct way to take somebody's blood pressure. Yes. Okay, so this is where the. It says where the artery should be. Yes. And it should put be. It, up. it should cover, uh -huh. you know, two thirds of the arm. Yes. Because. Uh, so that you can, you know, take adequate pressure. Mm -hmm. And not just that, when you go see, and that's why sometimes they always say, take off your clothes. You have yes. tight fitting clothes. Because yes. once you, your clothes are tight fitting and you put the, the, the cuff on, it tightens over the, the arm itself. Yeah. So you may give you a false increase 
of what your blood pressure really is. But so, I like that for watching face because it's low. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then you don't want it's to be like taking, you don't want to be taking medications that you you you, you shouldn't be taking. <laughs> so true. yes, so you put okay. it on. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the stethoscope here. I, I do have a stethoscope. Oh, okay, but, but this is a manual. Then, it's an yeah. automated one. So yeah. you put the stethoscope here yeah. over the artery. You and feel the precision, mm -hmm. and you can actually feel the pulse. So yes. you can count the pulse. Yeah. You know, on the average, sixty to eighty is ideal. Mm -hmm. um, anything above that. Uh, begins to cause, uh, you know, cause problem. Whatever you see there, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say, listen, one of the first signs of impending doom is tachycardia. Your heart rate begins to go up. Yeah. If something bad is about to happen, yeah. if you're afraid, if you're cold, if you're yeah. hot, if you're everything, if an infection begins to take place, yeah. your heart rate is the first thing that actually goes. So mm -hmm. it's important again, know what your heart rate, you know, is. But my heart rate is up right now because I'm afraid of what is going to well, show up. Well, that's, that's not surprising. <laughs> so. <laughs> so this is a very convenient, you know, automated uh, blood pressure you know, cuff and uh, machine. Uh, for those who are places where it's hard, you know, get one at home. Or if you can, go to a local store or you know pharmacy and you just ask. Um, so thank God for the days that we live in now. Technology has really improved a lot of things, mm -hmm. and uh, we should, as a people. Don't say, don't say, don't say, don't say, it's not true, it's not true, it's not true. <laughs> well, probably it's not true because your heart rate is so high. It's and besides, not at all true. Sometimes when, after a day's work, the best time to take pressure is when you settle down for at least, you know, 15 to 20, 20 sometimes even 30 minutes, where your whole body is, you know, slowed down and your heart rate slows down and everything else. If you check my blood pressure now, I'm sure it'll be high because I've been talking. No, no, but then I've excited. taken my, I've taken my, uh, yeah, my heart is pounding because I was waiting for that to come. All right. <laughs> it's so a good can, thing. <laughs> no, but if I saw this again. on a patient, I would be, yes, you'll be that, concerned. I would be, be very alarm. concerned yes. because there's one seven something. Well, well, you can take pressure. it again. Why don't you do it on this hand? Uh, because the best it has, one is the left because right. of the heart. Right, because of the heart. Okay. Uh, it's closer to the heart and all that. So. Okay, now it's going to be 200 because I'm about to faint. <laughs> <laughs> How can my blood pressure Well, the question high? is, did you check the blood pressure with this this morning? Yeah. With this same machine? No, I didn't check it. You didn't check it? I just took my meds. Okay, so when was the last time you checked the blood pressure? Mm, yesterday in the afternoon and it was 126. After work or... Okay, you're, you're so cool. You're, you're so cool to tell me what's resolved. <laughs> now it's going to go high because I'm gonna... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, this is error too. No, it's not good. Okay. So, but, you know, that's the way it is. Ideally, know what your blood pressure, your usual mm -hmm. blood pressure is. Mm -hmm. uh, because even when for young people who mm -hmm. um, get pregnant, it's important that, you know, uh, you check. Now, in kids, mm -hmm. uh, people ask, when do you begin to check the blood pressure? For children. In children, yes. Yes, you do check. Because sometimes, you know, age three and above is important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the recommendation here is at age three, they begin to check the blood pressure. Do you check it on a daily basis when they come? Yes, it's important um, when they come see their pediatrician. So mm -hmm. when you go see your pediatrician and your child is age three and above, yes, do check. Now, if your, pre your child is complaining of, you know, headaches or, you know, some of all these things, yes, mm -hmm. you know, ask that the blood pressure be checked again. What's now, if there's an issue of obesity, mm -hmm. yes, it's important. Please check the blood pressure, mm -hmm. you know, um, again, and put, you know, put a, a, a diary, a, a diary of what the blood yes. pressure is, so that when it changes, you begin to know when it changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, what's the correct way to use this one? Um, is it like that? Because yes. the artery is that correct. that way. Yes. And then the level has to be, should you raise it up to be the level of your heart? No, I mean, ideally it should be when you're most down. comfortable, you okay. understand? So okay. that you, know, you relax, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, often enough we say take deep breaths. So mm -hmm. when you take deep breath, it slows down the heart rate, mm -hmm. uh, it pulls blood pressure, uh, blood uh, into, you know, the arteries that supply the heart, and mm -hmm. they get healthier, and they get more food, and they're mm -hmm. happy. So, you know, take two, three deep breaths, and exhale slowly, mm -hmm. and then feel relaxed, and think of good things, and then you can check your blood pressure. Don't check it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, we have come to the end of this very exciting discussion, and uh, 
most Saturdays that as we're available we're going to be holding health discussions like this and I hope that Dr. Nelson will have more time to spend with us well, because it's been my pleasure. these are very informative sessions for um, African communities and Africans in the diaspora. Right. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. It was a pleasure having you. Do keep this conversation going on Facebook and uh, I'm going to post my blood pressure later <laughs> when I am calm and happy and relaxed, okay? Thank you very much, Doctor. And now you. we're going to the buffet, yes. and I'm going to look at what you're going to eat. <laughs> Healthy. <laughs> and I will announce it also. All right. And All right. so, people, this is where we call it a day over and out. Good night, and God bless. Bye-bye.